Hey everybody, Mark Spector Comics and I'm back. This time with the favorite video to make on this channel, the Beer and Comics Unboxing. Interested in seeing what I picked up recently and what kind of beers I got? Stay tuned for that intro. Alright, so welcome back. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so that when I do put out some content, you get it in a timely fashion. Like I said, um, favorite video to make on this channel, the beer and comics unboxing. From time to time, I do get gifted beer monthly subscriptions. This time, with my birthday just right past back in October, I was gifted by my family two months worth of, you know, mystery beer, you know, um, unboxing. So, um, they... I believe they continued with the same, you know, beer subscription that I've done in the in the past. It's like the monthly beer club or something like that. And uh, they primarily do craft beers, small, you know, for the most part, micro craft breweries. And um, once in a long time, if I guess if they're shorts, you know, short on a specific month, you may get some European craft beer. It's only happened once. But... Um, so I was gifted that for my birthday. Um, also picked up a small stack of slabs, you know, graded CGC books, if you're not familiar with the word slabs, um, from a local auction house, Bruno & Company, out of uh, Rhode Island. They had a small collection, all slab books, I believe. Um, I think four or 500 lots. So I ended up picking up six books. Um, ended up spending quite a bit. I'll tell you about that in a little bit. And uh, so I figured, why not show some of those off, unbox some beer, uh, can't do that of course without having a beer, so um, what are we drinking? Uh, Tis the season, of course, we got Samuel Adams Oktoberfest, I'm recording this early November, but you know, Oktoberfest beers do go until, I don't know, I feel like you can still drink it until... Mid-November, shoot. I, I've drank some Oktoberfest beers in December, January. <laughs> I like them. It's, you know, my favorite time of the year. Um, this one's pretty solid. You know, I'm a little biased because uh, I do like the uh, Sam Adams seasonal, especially the pumpkin and Oktoberfest beers. Not the best one out there. Not the worst. It's a good average Oktoberfest beer. Um, so I change it up a little bit, you know. Um, got a new... Uh, what do you call it? A new uh, light for the uh, channel. Uh, the one I was using before was pretty busted up. I think some point earlier in the year it fell and it cracked and it's just been, it was still functioning, but it was, you know, giving me issues of having to use tape on it. It was a hot mess, you know. Uh, so I was like, well, let me upgrade it. You know, it's good for the channel. Sometimes you, you know, just do the little minor upgrade and stuff like that. Helps the video quality. Obviously, it helps the channel a little bit, and it's not like breaking the budget. I spent like a little over 20 bucks, came with a little light, and even came with a green screen. So, uh, you're seeing for the first time a little green screen action. So, you know, there's going to be some issues, you know, there's going to be some errors, but this is part of the fun with uh, being a YouTube uh, content creator. You have fun with it, you learn along the way, and that's what's fun about being a YouTuber. So, enough of that. Let's uh, do some, you know, beer unboxing, right? Um, so if you've never watched this channel before, I do like my selection of beer. I'm not very particular on what kind of beer I drink. Um, at certain points of the year, I do have a preference as we're starting to get a little bit more towards late in the fall, you know, going into the winter. I do like or I do prefer porters, stouts, and some heavier IPAs. Um, doesn't mean I won't drink a lager. Doesn't mean I won't drink, you know, um, an ale, so forth. It's just typically what I tend to gravitate towards. Um, right now I'm drinking, like I said, an Oktoberfest, which is a fairly light beer. And it's because we're in the season right now. So I do drink a lot of pumpkin ales. I do drink some Oktoberfest pretty deep into the season. And then, um, like I said, then I tend to prefer porters and stouts just because it's a little bit more warm. It's a little bit more, you know, filling and, um, 
you don't have to drink much because they're typically on the stronger side. So, um, what the beer of the month they typically do is they tend to coordinate two breweries and you get what three, six, nine, twelve beers total. So you get two breweries, two different kinds of beers from each brewery. And they're more often than not small micro craft breweries you probably have never heard of. And um, only once have I gotten a duplicate beer. So uh, I'm excited to see what we have in here. I'll start with the first brewery and um, uh, go from there. I'll tell you a little bit about them if I have any information. And then that's about it. All right. So <laughs> this is the first time I've gotten a dusty bottle. This is fairly dusty. Um, it's not mold. It's just dusty. Let me clean this out, and we can talk a little bit about it, see if I know anything about this brewery, and um, go from there. All right. So uh, it doesn't look like there's any information. Oh, there we go. My bad. There is some information. All right. So it usually comes with this kind of flyer. One stop. Holiday shopping. This is from, as it says, monthlyclubs.com. I don't get paid by them. I don't get anything like that. It's just a little informational excuse me, a little dust there, a little informational uh, nit pit, if you know, you like beer, if you like wine, you can go check it out, so forth, they even do cigars, so flowers, whatever it may be, but they obviously, they outsource the stuff and, you know, make a little package out of it, so um, obviously this is the micro-brewed beer of the month club, if you hadn't noticed by now, and uh, let's see what they talk about, all right, so we got Peak Organic Brewing Company, it's going to be one of the breweries and Brothers Craft Brewing. So this is funny. I've had, I talked about this once before. On a rare occasion, you will get a duplicate. And I've had Peak Organic on here, I think it was last year. And um, love the brewery. They're based out of Portland, Maine. So semi-regional. And um, they're actually they're pretty solid beers. Um, Brothers Craft Brewing out of Harrison, of Virginia. I was actually in Virginia back in the summer for my uh, summer contract. Um, didn't hear about that brewery, so I'm interested in trying about that one as well, which I think this is the first beer. So, what we got? Let's check this out. Little Hellion, 4.9% um, ABV, and it's a, a lager. There you go, from Brothers Craft Brewing. Uh, what do they say on here? Brewed bottled in the Blue Ridge by Brothers Craft Brewing. So I, I it's funny because I spent a lot of time in the Blue Ridge Mountains. I worked in Charlottesville, which the Blue Ridge Mountains were immediately to the west of the city. I did spend, I think, one or two days just perusing through the city of Harrisonburg. They did have a comic shop there. Um, ended up uh, checking an antique mall while I was there as well. Didn't end up getting any comic books. It just didn't happen that way. But um, the um, the comic shop I did go to while I was in um, Harrisonburg, I did pick up, uh, I think, three books. Three books. I forget. It was one of the last hauls I did while I was in Virginia. So, uh, But I did not get a chance to check out the brewery. I do like the um, the label on there. It's got a little bit of, you know, Little Hellion, it's called. And it's got some flames there. It looks like a forest. And what looks like. A watchtower. So, uh, interested in trying that out. Can't wait to see what that is. And uh, maybe you'll see uh, a little post with a, a bottle and a comic on there, like I do sometimes on my channel. All right. So, the second beer. Oh, dope. So, obviously, like I said, we're drinking in October, November season. So, we tend to drink a lot of Oktoberfest and some pumpkin beers. So, what do we got here? We got a fest beer. This is perfect. I was hoping to get like something seasonal. So, and these, like I said, it's micro craft brewery. They don't ship out of, you can't get this in New England by any means. I've never seen this brewery. Uh, Fest beer. So it says 5.6%. It's a Marzen lager from Brothers Craft Brewing. Has a simple label, like something you would see like in Bavaria, like in Germany, like on the countryside. Pretty cool. And it is, what is this? Uh, do, 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 do. does it say how much percentage? 5.6, sorry. 5.6. So there you go. There's the uh, the two beers from 
Brothers uh, Craft Brewing Company out of Harrison, Virginia. So that's pretty neat. I'm glad I got something from Virginia. Uh, I'm going to save the two beers from Peak Organic for after we show some books, of course. Um, so, uh, like I said, I ended up picking up some books from uh, Bruno and Company Auctioneer House. Bought six books. I spent, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, where the invoice is close by. Uh, it came to just shy of 600 bucks. You know, I always like to talk about how much we spend. You know, it's, it's it's always good in the community to be fully transparent. You know, it helps people know what the current market prices are for certain books and so forth. I, I don't really see the point of, like, hiding what you pay for a book. It's kind of silly. Um, but uh, let me see. Yeah, it was just under 600 bucks. I, I saved a few bucks. It would have been over 600 bucks. If I paid in card, because there's like a little fee for credit card. So I saved like, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 bucks um, paying cash. So um, first book, like I said, I wasn't looking for anything in particular. And that's kind of like the beauty of um, not having wish lists. When stuff come up for auction, when stuff come up for buy it now, claim sales, whatever it may be on whatever platform you're going on. Um, you know when you don't have kind of a wish list, it can be dangerous, but um, you don't have to be like, you don't fall into that FOMO. You just buy basically what you want, you know? And uh, that's kind of the situation I'm in right now. I'm not really looking for anything. I have my personal grail already. I got World of Finite 32, as you know. Um, I collect some Golden Age. So now I'm really just looking for some cool, like Marvel and DC keys from... I don't know, mainly Bronze Age, Silver, Gold. Not really modern stuff for the most part, but it's pretty funny because the first book I'm going to be showing is a modern book. <laughs> and I just like this cover. Um, it does have a first appearance. It is a variant cover. I know for you Venom fans, you're going to love this book. And um, this is Amazing Spider-Man 569. This is the... I don't know what this is. If this is the 1 in 25... Or what the case may be. But it just says variant edition on there. But this is a really cool Eddie Granoff cover. And uh, it just basically says on here on the label. Go <laughs> read the label on the other side as uh, Chris the comic vet would say. Uh, Eddie Brock becomes anti-venom. Thunderbolts, Norman Osborn, Radioactive Man, Songbird, Bullseye, and Venom appearance. Dan Slot story, John Romita Jr. and Clan. Claus Jansen artwork. Just a beautiful cover. I love this cover. Um, so that was the first book. I don't think I have any other, like, modern. Like, when I say modern, I'm talking about, like, 2000s-ish books in here. I think, for the most part, they're going to be bronze, copper, and silver. I'm trying to just jog my memory real quick because I bought these back in... Um, late September, that's when the auction was, and I'm just doing the unboxing now, and this is early November, um, yeah, I think the rest are all, yeah, fairly older books, all right, this book, cool book, um, also love the cover on this classic, um, Jack Kirby and Joe Sinna cover, this is from the Silver Age, I uh, love seeing, like, Captain America and Daredevil, like, punching covers. So if I'm ever on, like, a Comic Glories or one of those um, live channels when you're, you know, showing a specific type of cover, I'd probably go with this one if you're going for a punching cover. And uh, this is Daredevil, issue number 43. Classic Captain America punching Daredevil cover. Um doesn't really specify anything else other than it's the origin of Daredevil, partially retold. Captain America appearance, obviously. And <clears throat> it's graded at SCGC 8.0. So a nice little high grade. This is a tough book to get in higher grade, of course. Um, typically in the Silver Age, um, I don't know. You obviously want to buy the, the grade that you can afford. I didn't pay much for this book. This book, surprisingly, is not that expensive. What did I pay, even pay for this book? 
trying to see. I, pay, <laughs> I, th I think I got a steal on this book. I paid a hundred bucks for this book. Um, this book goes for a lot more than that. I know that's for sure. It's it's tough to get in higher grade. Um, usually in Silver Age, I tend to, to target at least 4.0s. I rarely buy books 4.0 or, or under 4.0 in the Silver Age, um, especially for uh, investment purposes. I don't, but a lot of these are still fairly common, you know, to find out. There's a lot of them out there for certain books, especially like a main title like Daredevil. Um, next book, continuing on in the Silver Age, we got big fan of this character. I love these cosmic characters. Um, you did briefly see this character in the, um, I want to say it was a Thor, Thor movie? Thor Love and Thunder? Was it? No, no we didn't. We saw him in a brief image in Thor Love of Thunder. And um, this was Strange Tales, issue number 140, 157. And uh, if you're not familiar with this uh, this title, this is my favorite title in the Silver Age. And uh, it's a Strange Tales, possibly in, in Marvel in general. Great, great covers. Um, a lot of them by Jack Kirby and uh, Storenko. And also some great writing by Stan Lee. So this one is um, also Jim Steranko and Stan Lee stories. Jim Steranko and Maurice Severin artwork. Jim Steranko cover. Um, really cool cover. You see uh, the globe there, the earth. You see Fury. And you see this menacing character on top, Baron Strucker. Um, first appearance of Living Tribunal in... Brief appearance on the last page. Obviously, 158 is the great book. You know, great cover. Um, got a little page in the back. People who like to draw. And uh, this came back at a 6.0 white pager. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. All right. Next book. I told you. Big fan of Strange Tales. So they had a couple of Strange Tales books. Uh, I think there was at least six or seven lots for Strange Tales during the auction. Ended up picking up two of the issues from the 150s. And this one is also a key book. This is Strange Tales issue number 150. And this one came back at a 6.5. Well, it came back, I bought it at a 6.5. Also, White Pager. Um, you got a key appearance here, and it's also cover appearance. This is the first appearance of Umar. Um, I believe she is, I want to say, either the daughter or the sister of, uh, Dormammu? I could be <laughs> I could be wrong, I could be wrong. I forget offhand. Um, there's also John Bushima's first artwork. Our first work for Marvel, and it's a Kalu appearance. So this is Lee Kirby Thomas and Everett Story, John Buscema and Frank Giacola artwork, and Bill Everett cover and artwork. Really cool cover. You know, cosmic cover as well. You see Doctor Strange going after Umar. And you got a planet there behind her in the backdrop. It's a nice cover. You can't go wrong with these uh, Silver Age Strange Tales covers. All right, so we've what are we shown? I think we've shown one, two, three, four books. So it's four of the six. I'm going to show you the last two beer that I got from the other brewery. I get a little sip, and then we'll finish off with the last two books, which will be going into the um, silver. Actually, no, I think they're both uh, both Bronze Age, sorry. All right, so last two beers. What do we got? All right, so like I said, this is from Peak Organic uh, Brewing Company out of Portland, Maine. If you didn't notice from the first picture of the pamphlet, probably tipped you on what the beer is going to be. Fresh cut. I've had this beer before. It's not bad. It's a pretty good Pilsner. 
So uh, this is a 4.6 dry hop Pilsner. Um, this was actually one of the duplicates. I've had this beer on the channel when I did the unboxing. Um, I've had a few of their other beers too before because I've, you know, like I said, this beer is local. So um, semi-local being in, in Maine. And then the last beer, I have not had this one before, and I'm happy that this is in, <coughs> excuse me, a seasonal beer. This is Autumn IPA. Pretty cool. I like that. Um, a Session IPA for fall. So this one is also a light beer, 4.8%. So you can get some light IPAs if, you know, for your, uh, your beer drinkers out there. Typically, people think that IPAs tend to be on the stronger side, but that's not always the case. They do have, obviously, double IPAs, triple IPAs, and so forth. But, you know, for the uh, regular IPAs, you, you can get them, you know, as low as 4% and upward. So, uh, pretty cool. I am happy with those two micro brews. Um, like I said, I've had Peak Organic Brewing before. Never had Brothers Craft Brewing, which is pretty neat that it was out of uh, Virginia, especially in the area where I was staying, um, and I didn't try out that brewery when I was out there, which was, you know, good to see something new, and uh, three of the four beers I got in there are going to be first for me, so that's always fantastic, so I'll be excited to see what the um, next shipment will be, and that'll come out later in November for December, usually like the last week, because this one came last week of October. So, last two books. These are going to be some uh, nice higher grade books. Um, this first book is going to be Submariner. Issue number, is so 63? Yeah, 63. This is going towards the later run of the, um, the Silver Age title. So, this is in the Bronze Age, but it started in the Silver Age. And... Um, so this is from 1973, 20 Center. The cover, uh, I'm going to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of the way uh, Submariner is drawn <laughs> on this cover. I do like him a little better on the next cover, and I'll show you that one after. But um, I am a big fan. I, I do like the way the trade dress looks on here. I've always been a big fan of the way the, the Submariner trade dresses looked like over in the years particularly in the Golden Age and Silver Age, and in this case, Bronze Age. Um, but the cover, who did this cover? Um, uh, John Romita and Joe Sinat cover. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I guess they you can't say everything that they did was good. This is not <laughs> one of my favorites compared to the other covers I showed earlier. There was, uh, you know, a uh, Joe Sinat cover. This one, not so much. Um, I can say that the action panels on here do look nice. You know, I do like the, uh, the underwater vessels attacking Submariner. Actually, here on the side does look pretty cool. But I guess just, like, the way he's drawn here on the cover, the front, you know, obviously the, the important part there of Submariner does not look the best. I don't know, just something looks off. Maybe it's his head. His head looks a little weird. It just, I don't know, it looks too flat. But otherwise, it looks decent. The little corner art here looks actually pretty good as well. So I don't know what happened. I don't know what, what happened with the headshot there. It looks a little off. And on the back, it says, look who's smiling now. Um, I didn't even tell you what's cool about this book. All right, so why did I buy this book? I didn't even spend much on this book. I think I paid... 60, 70 bucks. I couldn't let this go because it was so cheap. Uh, 70, uh, what did I pay? 60 bucks. So why did I buy this book? Because it is a Mark Jewelers insert and a Menon insert. So it is a dual insert, which are pretty cool. They did these back in the 70s. I think more so than any other time. Mark Jewels obviously spanned from the 70s to the early 90s before they went and went out of business. But um, they didn't do the Menon inserts, I don't think, past the 70s. So this is a dual insert. I forget particularly what the Menon insert was. It's just like another promo, just like the Mark Jewelers 
insert was. Uh, I just can't remember what specifically it was. Obviously, the mock jewels was to buy jewelry for your your significant other while you you know you were at a military base more often than not. You know, and they would get these books, but uh, I forget what the men in insert. But pretty cool to get a dual insert and in a higher grade. These were often folded up, rolled into your back pocket, and you walked around during the base. So uh, you don't often see these in high grade. You know, I'm going to obviously consider something over 7.0 high grade for a book in this in this age for uh, a dual insert. Uh, so that was pretty cool, and uh, yeah. Yeah, pretty neat. And then the last book. Uh, talked a little bit, said that these last two books were going to be, you know, Submariner books. Subi, big fan of Submar Namor and Submariner. Um, this one is early on in the Bronze Age. This came out in December of 1970. And it's a first appearance. Um, I thought I got this one for a pretty good price, too. I think I paid... This was... Uh, the most that I paid up all the books, and I told you I spent just under 600 bucks, um, but not by much. I, I think it's been 130. And uh, this is issue number 32. This is the capture of the Submariner. Um, so <laughs> you see him captured on air, Namor on display, like a prize exhibit. I love these word bubbles. Let me know in the comments down below if you like these word bubble covers. They're really cool. Uh, says, I, I never thought I'd live to see this day. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting our feature attraction. This is a nice cover. Um, Sal Buscema cover. Roy Thomas story. Sal Buscema and Jim Mooney artwork. Origin and first appearance of Lyra. This character right here. It's our first appearance. Um, as you can see, it also states it here as well. What is the startling superpower of the girl called Lyra? Shocking answer awaits you inside. So, really cool to get this in a 9.6 white pager. Um, really surprised that it went for the price it went. It's really, you know, obviously Submariner books, key books, non-key books, whatever it may be. Really dipped quite a bit, especially after the, um, the movie. So now we're talking about about a year, right? The movie came out in mid or late November of last year. So it's definitely had its drop. But a great book to pick up. Great cover. I do like the um, sharks there in the background. The uh, turtles. You got a squid there. Just a cool, like, fun cover. A lot going on there. And you got, obviously, Namor tied up. Well, not tied up, but, you know, captured. He's in a, he's captured and he's being displayed. It was pretty cool. Um, so, yeah. That's it. That's my, geez, lengthy video. Almost, almost a half an hour. Um, beer and comics for the month. I don't do these often. Um, would like to do them more frequently. So <laughs> maybe if somebody would like to sponsor me from <laughs> one of the brewing companies or a monthly club subscription, that'd be great. I'd love to do this every month. Otherwise, it is pricey to do these. Um, but uh, yeah, let me know in the comments down below if you had any of those beers before from either Peak Organic or Brothers Craft Brewery. And let me know about the books I picked up, if you have any of those, what you like, what you don't like, so forth. Uh, like I said, playing with new, a new light, playing with a green, uh, green screen, <laughs> just playing, just having some fun, you know, on YouTube, you know. That's what's fun about being a content creator, just constantly learning, constantly having fun, making the hobby fun itself. Until next time, guys, this is Dave from Mark Spectre Comics. All right, guys, out.